I am waiting for our viewers. Okay, good morning. Let us start bit early so that we can finish it in time and we will also discuss uh, tips regarding AI. So, let me start with some exa one example on Aloha. So, I will read out the problem first. A pure Aloha network transmit 200 bit frames on a channel of 200 kbps link what is the throughput of the system that produces thousands fr thousand frames per second so the given data is that it is talking regarding a pure aloha system where we have stations like this and all of them are working with uh, aloha concept whenever they are ready they will go to transmit i am talking regarding a pure aloha i am not talking about a slotted aloha okay as you know the formula that is used to calculate efficiency or a throughput in a pure aloha is that is s is equal to g in, uh, g into e raised to minus 2g fine so this is what is the formula that is used for calculation of throughput in a pure aloha fine so what it is said is the link bandwidth is 200 kbps and the frames which are allowed to be transmitted on this link whose size here we are assuming that all the frames are of fixed size they are of 200 bit say long now he has provided these two information and what he said is what is the throughput of the system if a system produces this whole system here indicates all the machines together if they produce thousand frames per second this is what is the situation he has given so for this particular situation what is the throughput so he has given these two data frame size is 200 bits link bandwidth is 2000 uh, 200 kilo uh, bits per second and number of frames that are generated by the system in one second is thousand fine so this is what is the data he has provided using that data we need to calculate the throughput so to start with first i find out as you know that g here g what is g g is number of frames during one frame transmission time that i will call it as tfr so the number of frames that are present during one tfr or frame transmission time simply you say frame transmission time number of frames present during one frame transmission time so that will be the value of g so that will go to decide the throughput so you see what we need to find out here is to find out g fine so i need to know how many number of frames that are present during one TFR time? Fine. 
so first to find out uh, say number of frames during one tfr time i should know what is tfr so first i will find out what is frame transmission time as you know that transmission time tt is given by say frame size since i am talking regarding a frame here i am using the term frame or otherwise normally we call it as file size okay so frame size divided by bandwidth this was the formula that what we have discussed so the frame size is 200 bits and bandwidth is 200 kilobits per second so i will write it like this 200 into 10 raised to 3 if i simplify this i am going to get 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 seconds that is nothing but 1 milliseconds now i know that frame transmission time that is instead of tt i will call it as tfr here frame transmission time so it is 1 milliseconds to transmit one frame i need a 1 milliseconds time so how many frames are generated during 1 milliseconds i need to find it out so already we have a data that number of frames that are generated in 1 second so i need to find out the number of frames that will going to be generated in 1 milliseconds anyway he has given this term with the help of this I, very easily we can find out this value say it is nothing but if 1000 frames are getting generated in 1 second naturally for 1 milliseconds it is 1 frame yes so if I express this in terms of seconds so it is 10 raised to minus 3 seconds so naturally the number of frames that are generated in 1 milliseconds is 1 frame so now I know what is the value of g this is my g it is 1 1 frame ok so when I substitute this value in the above equation fine so I am going to get the value of throughput s is equal to e into s raised to I mean uh, g into e raised to minus 2g so this equal to what g is 1 into e raised to minus uh, 2 so if you calculate this it will come somewhere around 0 0.135 use your calculate, calculator find out this value so that is nothing but 0.135 so then throughput is 13.5 percent with the help of this throughput very easily i can calculate number of frames that can say travel through this channel without collision probably so it is again not a, a sure thing that so the most probably probable thing is that so many frames will going to escape from the collision so that is you know that you are calculated by s value is 0.135 that into 1000 frames which are generated in one second so in one second 135 frames will going to say move in this channel without collision this is what is the value okay so we have calculated the throughput and we also know how many frames will going to escape from the collision so this is regarding pure aloha similar way you can apply a formula for slotted aloha also so there this value will going to be changed to a minus g okay so this is regarding pure aloha and before concluding i'll just discuss regarding csma carrier sense multiple excess transmission uh, carrier sense multiple excess so in previous two cases in aloha and pure aloha so in these two situations we are not bothered regarding the say uh, status of the medium so whenever a station is ready we say that you transmit or otherwise wait for the new time slot to transmit so this was the rule we have adopted so whenever a station is ready with the frame 
you are not asking the station to check the situation of the medium. So that is why the collisions started happening in the medium. So what we do is we will try to add an additional ability to the say system where a stations will go to have a sensing of the medium. So before transmission we are asking the station to sense the medium. Okay, if medium is free or not, let them sense and then transmit. So this helps us to increase the efficiency of the system. Okay, and this will help us to say make a transmission say collision free. Okay, this was an idea. Okay, so but what happens you see, I am asking any station before transmitting sense the medium. Yes, so sensing of medium before transmission we call it as carrier sensing. Carrier, carrier here indicates is there any signal carrier basically talking regarding the signal that is present in the medium if is if is there any other signals okay if any other station is involved in transmission its signal will go to be detected so before transmission the stations will go to sense the medium is there anybody involved in transmission or not then based on that it will make a decision of transmission so this is what is called as csma okay so when I talk of adding a, a additional character of say sensing the medium and transmitting, so it does not mean that it will going to avoid all the collisions. Even though after adding this additional ability to the systems, so the system is not free from collision. Why it is, we will discuss. You see, whenever I am talking regarding a system of this type, which are connected through a common medium, fine. S1, S2, S3. Now assume a situation where at time t1 seconds these two stations are ready for transmission. Till t1 seconds nobody is involved in transmission. Station, this medium is free. There is nobody is transmitting during say uh, till t1 seconds. At t1 seconds both of them are simultaneously ready for transmission. Now what they do? As a procedure said, both of them sense the medium. What will be the status of medium for both? It is nobody is involved in transmission, medium is free. When medium is free, what they do? Both of them jump for transmission. Fine. So both of them they start transmitting their flames. As you know that the time is needed to say signal to move from this place to this place fine so that time we call it as propagation time yes every station has a some certain amount of propagation time to propagate the signal throughout the system yes so this tp is the one which will going to be the one which will going to cause the collision now see the situation i said both if they both of them are ready at t1 both of them simultaneously transmit in the end the signals the frames gets collided. So this leads to a collision in a CSMA. Even though we have added a say technique of say sensing of carrier, still the possibility of collisions will be there in the system. Now to anyway, we will try to avoid this in the later part. Right now, I said that CSMA also, there is, definitely there will be a collision even though if you add an additional ability of sensing a carrier. Now fine. The situation is I talk regarding collision and how much time the medium has to be a free here that is TP time till TP time if nobody involved in transmission then there is a possibility or then the station will go to successfully transmit the frame. So that means vulnerable time in this case is TP okay vulnerable time in this case is TP. Yes, so basically till, say I am talking regarding the worst case condition, if this is my system, till this point a signal reaches, okay, so then all will come to know regarding somebody's transmission, then there is a less chance of collision. So I am talking about two far, uh, far more stations taking into a consideration, their TP will be used as a vulnerable time not a two nearest stations TP. Okay. So what we are talking is, we are talking of considering a worst case. So that is two far away stations 
to say for more stations we have taken and the tp is value will be based on that distance fine right? so if tp till tp time if nobody is involved in transmission then the uh, uh, csma transmits the frame without collision okay so this is the case of say sensing of medium and transmitting so how what way the stations will going to transmit i said sense the carrier and transmit now i simply said transmit how they will going to transmit so for transmission of a frame again there are three methods proposed in this csma technique one is persistent technique or otherwise we call it as one persistent persistent technique second one is non persistent technique and third one is p persistent technique yes these are the three methods that are used for transmission of frames one persistent technique non persistent technique p persistent technique what is a one persistent technique what is non persistent and what is p persistent that we will going to see so basically in one persistent technique yes so this box here indicates station is busy or medium is busy not station medium is busy okay so i'll this is used for indicating the busy situation this is used to indicate a straight line is used to indicate a say non busy situation now in p in one persistent technique okay one persistent i'm talking regarding one persistent so if any station is ready for transmission it keeps on sensing the medium okay it is all the time in say in touch with the medium it is bit hungry for transmission it is very greedy system what it will do is it keeps on sensing the medium moment it finds the medium is free it transmits okay this is what is an idea that is used in a one persistent technique when i talk regarding non persistent technique it is slightly different from this okay what it will do is station senses the medium if medium is busy it will back off and it wait for some random amount of time see it is not continuously sensing the medium it is not that greedy it's moment it notices that medium is busy it backs off and waits for random amount of time again it tries its luck so if medium is still busy again the same procedure of backing off yes so again it is a random time back off so then sense the medium if medium is free transmit yes so this is how it will work so here it is made to wait for random amount of time whereas here the stations are continuously sensing the medium and they are transmitting the major disadvantage of a uh, one persistent technique is that there is more possibilities of collision if any stations if say for example if station 1 is ready at this time it is continuously sensing the medium and if station 2 is be ready at this time it will also sense the medium continuously and both of them will be simultaneously involved in transmission at this particular junction because no one knows that moment both of them they come to know that medium is free both of them will jump for transmission and this in this system there is a more possibility of collision but when you take a similar situation in this case you see station 1 is ready at this junction and if station 2 is ready at this junction yes as a rule suggest moment it notices it backs off moment it notices it backs off this two will also going to back off so what happens say here the back off time whose back off time get exhausted early it will sense it again and it will transmit so there is a less chance of collision in case of non persistent technique okay now to take the good things of these two p persistent technique technique has been devised in p persistent technique it is a mixture of both one persistent and non persistent where we are talking of sensing the medium yes use the technique of continuously sensing the medium 
moment a medium is free station will not be greedy like one persistent technique it will transmit with probability p here i am talking of some term known as probability with p probability it will go to transmit okay how exactly this p will go to be calculated it is a simple technique where with some probability the stations will be allowed to transmit and with some probability they will be allowed to back out say as you know that p if the station is allowed to transmit with p probability then the possibility of say backing off is 1 minus p yes with q probability it will not it will not transmit with p probability it will transmit with q probability it will not transmit so it is entirely depends on p value how exactly it will be implemented that i will go to discuss it in the later part so here too we are adding those two techniques like say move it, it is keeps on sensing the medium it is not waiting yes so one drawback with the non persistent is that station senses the medium backs off senses the medium backs off say now during this time if some some nobody is involved in transmission this free time this say channel free time is wasted so to overcome this wastage time this technique has been devised we are asking it to sense it continuously don't wait so moment it notices you are asking it to transmit with some probability p so it can utilize this wastage of time so this is what is one greatest advantage and apart from that it also reduces the collisions that are involved in a one persistent csme so that is why since it is transmitting at probability p we are calling it as p persistent technique if p equal to 1 immediately it will transmit if p is lesser than 1 it will transmit slightly at a delayed time okay so this is what is the technique that is used in p persistent okay if p is equal to 1 then it again it becomes a one persistent transmission only so these are the three different techniques that will be used for say transmission yes and last part of it is say how to back off how to notice the collision has happened so in csma i have not addressed that issue csma i said simply sense the carrier but i want an ability of say moment a collision is detected station should back off from transmission in csma we have not added that ability what happens if station notices since we are not talking of noticing of a collision what happens it keeps on send, sending the frame and the at one say if collision occurs that time also it keeps on pushing the bits of this frame yes so what happens simply there is a wastage of time moment the collision gets noticed by any of the stations they instead of pushing the remaining part of the frame they should back off from the transmission this will go to save the time of say medium as well as it will help us to deter or resolve the collision problem as early as possible okay so that is why we are talking of adding a additional quality to the station that is collision detection so carrier sense multiple access collision detection technique okay so these are the one which will go to be used in these type of a techniques that are used in say modern uh, uh, protocols ethernet is the one which is using this technique ethernet so ieee 802.3 standard okay so that ethernet uses this technique okay so we we'll, uh, again in ethernet it also uses one persistent technique for transmission and it also has an ability of collision detection okay i hope it is clear to you people i'll stop my discussion over here and i'll just give you a small tip regarding i already we have conducted a mcq type of a quiz for you all okay ia is also more or less similar to that uh, that quiz what we have conducted where you will go to have a question and uh, as uh, every question will going to be say supported with multiple answers out of those multiple answers you have to select the correct answer and for that we will going to award the marks yes and uh, in this mcq type of question paper we also talk of adding say certain problems there will be no explained described type of a questions 
okay so based on the things what you have studied with based on the ideas what you have studied till now so based on those things we will going to ask you certain questions or problems okay you should have a clear if you have a clear cut idea regarding a concept it is easy for you to answer the mcq questions okay so no as, uh, explain describe type of questions only uh, multiple choice questions where you will going to be provided with four answers most probably four answers again last thing about the question paper that question all the questions will not be of same marks depending on the difficulty level we are awarding the marks to a question sometimes it may be of one mark sometimes it may be of two marks sometimes it may be of three marks depending on that we are conducting the we are creating the question paper and question paper will going to contain say 50 marks questions i am not going to say that 50 questions i am saying that 50 mark questions will go to be there in the question paper i hope it is clear to you all thank you very much so all the best for your eye prepare well the number of time that is awarded uh, that is given is um, i think it is already given in the notice it is one and a half hours we will go to give you one uh, 90 minutes to answer all mcqs is there any other doubt you are free to put say so i am as i said that we have not yet set the question paper number of questions even we don't know so as i said it is my say mcq paper will be for 50 marks so some of the questions will be of two marks some of them will be of four marks depending on that how many four marks questions will be there how many two marks question will be there how many one marks question will be there based on that the number of questions will going to be decided is there any doubt i am reading your charts please put chat your doubts Thank you Aditya for asking questions. Close the live streaming now.